Very nice. Yeah. So this is a Detroit landmark. When you just drive by it, the architecture is just gorgeous. If you've been inside the theater, it's lovely, but there's so much more to it we didn't know. We're talking and taking you inside parts of Masonic Temple. Right, which is, of course, the, the Masons, or a secret society. This has stood for nearly 90 years, and it's got so many secret rooms, hidden doorways. It's got a lot of mystery to it, and photographer Alex Atwell takes us on this tour that is uniquely Detroit. We're in the Masonic Temple building. Right now we're in the Masonic Temple Theater. And it seats uh, 4,400 people. And we have the largest stage with the largest house uh, in the Midwest. And we do have uh, 1,037 rooms total in our building which has 550,000 square feet. It's a big building with a lot of rooms. It's uh, the largest Masonic temple in the world. Freemasonry is based on, it goes back to the time of King Solomon and the building of the temples, and they had their uh, signs and handshakes and things like that. Yeah, it's classified as a fraternity. Uh, back in the late 1700s, you had to actually be quite well-to-do to be a Mason. Um, and a lot of our founding fathers were Masons, including George Washington. The premise is they want to take good men and they just want to make them better. The square and compass is the just working tools of a master Mason. And using the working tools and things like that that a Mason would use to build a structure is you would build a structure or, or inside yourself and become a better person that way. Our original building was built in 1894 on Lafayette, and then within a few years, the building had become too small. Masonry had outgrown that. So they were kind of concerned of that happening again. So they ended up uh, buying this property and built the largest Masonic temple in the world. Our founding fathers actually had the wherewithal and the money to build this building anywhere in the city that they wanted to. But they decided to, to choose this location because it would be right across the street from Cass Park. And they always thought of, like, this becoming New York City, it'd be great to have your building across from an area like Central Park. So you can see how beautiful it is. We also have uh, nine different lodge rooms where the Masons meet, and one of them being where the Knights Templar meet. This is called our Commandery Chapel. The Knights Templar go back to the medieval ages. Magna es veritas is greatness and truth. And it's actually one of my favorite rooms here. The, uh, Prelate's Chamber or a Red Cross Room. When the, uh, when the candidate is joining the Detroit Commandery here, they would uh, kneel at this altar and the chaplain or minister of the Commandery would give him his obligation. In designing this room, the chaplain would stand up there and he would be the only person in this entire room that can see the cross through the window and into the other room. Very few people have been in this room. We're entering the Detroit Commandery Archives Room, which started meeting in 1851, and there's been several prominent uh, members that have met here for Detroit Commandery through the ages of uh, Detroit history. Well, some of the things that you'll see here is a setup here that would be for one of the orders that the Commandery does. You'll see some of the different banners here that uh, represented the Commandery through their different orders and things like that in different uh, belt buckles and jewels of the order. Yeah, not too many people get a chance to see this area here, even members who've been longtime members of our building here. And if you're not a member of the commandery and you don't happen to come on a day when somebody's here to open it up, you really don't even get a chance to see this area. So it's, it's, a, it's a hidden jewel. It's very neat to have a building like this in any community, just given the size. And it's, it's actually pretty much untouched from, you know, other than doing some painting and things like that. So when you walk into it, you have the feel that you're stepping back in the 1920s and coming into a historic building that uh, is just, it's just totally amazing. Boy, it's so great to learn the history and look inside some of those rooms. Just imagine if we knew the secret handshake. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what we could see. But you know, it's made so many headlines for some of the financial uh, challenges that mm -hmm. have been going on. It's nice to see why it's so important to preserve a place like that. And that's one of the districts that the District Detroit with the Illich family oh, is yeah. working on. I think they call it Cass Village. And mm -hmm. it's, yeah, I, I want to say it's... Uh, like 1,200 homes possibly in that area that they could work through. So it's, it's an incredible yeah, potential there that could center around that park Absolutely. and that landmark. It would be really nice to see that all revitalized for sure.